Hello ladies and gentlemen, Rhett Coleman here, giving you my first tutorial ever in Adobe Photoshop. Now I might be using Photoshop CS6, but honestly, it doesn't matter what version you're using. Things are probably going to be the same. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own documents from scratch. This is very useful when you're trying to print something or make an image for the web or video, whatever. Now, I know Photoshop's main focus is to open photos and slice them up and make something new, and we'll cover all that later, I promise. But starting from scratch is a step many people miss, which results in their web photos or their video photos or whatever becoming very difficult as you're trying to figure things out. So I'm telling you, this tutorial is probably one of the most important tutorials you're going to have if you're learning Photoshop. So with that said, let's get started. First, go to File and click New. Now this window is going to pop up. Don't be intimidated. I promise you it's really easy once you see everything inside of it and get really familiar with it. In fact, let's start simple. Just name your file right here. Just type in a name. Now you'll see here that the presets do 90% of the work for you. So if you click a preset, you're going to see these two categories. So with these categories, you're going to see this category right here is for projects you intend to print. And then this category right here is for the projects you intend to stay digital, such as like, you know, making them for the web or making them for video. So what's the difference between if you want to print something or make it digital? Is there a change in the settings? Well, what you're going to find is there's a difference in unit of scales, resolution, color mode, and background contents. You see, if you look in the height and width of printing, you'll see inches. What, that means you can literally get a ruler out and measure how big or how small your project's going to be. Now, if you go to digital, you'll see that they use pixels. For those of you who are familiar with web design or film editing, you'll see that these pixel numbers are actually very familiar, such as 1920 by 1080 is an HD film. So the cool thing about this is within each preset, there's also a size drop down menu. So here you can actually select a preset size of your project within the preset you're using. It's like pretty sectioned. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know that was a bad joke. Anyways, now I want you to pay close attention to resolution. If you're going to print, you're going to want to have a resolution of 300. If you're planning to keep it digital, you're going to want to have a resolution of 72. The reason is 300 resolutions, very detailed, great for print, but it also makes your file size really big. So if you're sticking with digital and you want to upload to a website or a film, you're going to want to keep that file small, which is why you keep it at 72 resolution. I promise you when it's on the computer screen, you won't even notice the difference between 72 and 300. So whether you decide to print or keep it digital, you also need to mess with the color mode. So if you tend to print, you need to have your color mode at CMYK. Printers love this format and it's going to look a lot better in color when you print it out. Now, if you're going to go digital, you want to keep it at RGB. So basically that's it. You're done with clicking all the settings and what you need to do. The last option you really have is, do you want the project to have a white background or you want it to have a transparent background? Now I suggest if you're going to print, you keep it at a white background because you're going to be printing on a white piece of paper. But me for digital, I usually keep it at transparent. So when you're done, press OK. Bam. That's it. You're ready to rock. Now, if you forgot something, don't freak out. You can go back and change those settings, and it's super easy. All you got to do is click on Image, and then click on Image Size. And then there you go. All the info that you had earlier is right there. You just got to change this one box right here to inches or pixels, whatever you're working on. Great. That's it. You're set up. You are ready to go. Now, one last thing I want to show you is now that you have your project size up, what happens if you want to import another picture? Well, let me open Thomas here. Hey everybody, hope I'm not too late. No, this is actually perfect timing, Thomas. I'm just going to select you, copy you here, and I'm going to place you over here in this document. <laughs> Neato, that was cool! So now you get to see Thomas's original size compared to the project size. So if you were to print him out right now, that's how big he would be. Well, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Join us next time as we go over the basic tools and how to stretch things and make things bigger, and we'll just have a good time. So until next time, I'm Rhett Coleman. See you then. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.